Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is CC here bringing you another replay cast and this one is going to be um, the League of Men versus the Fun Machine, TFM versus LOM. Already hopping into the band phase, so let me get right into that, but first let me just say I'm working on my audio so it may not be totally perfect yet, the levels may need to go up or down, trying to reduce noise and all that, so let me know what I can do to help you there if you want a better audio, different audio, or something else. Anyway, right into the bands here. First bands coming out from Fun Machine are going to be Nyx and Nyx. Both very similar sounding names, but very different purposes. Nyx is a support hero, Nyx is a carry, so they will ban both of those out as they just do not want to deal with the annoyance of Nyx, his rage, his feast, his open wounds, his infest, everything about him tends to just make him a little bit of an annoying hero to contend against. So, good band there. Uh, he, he tends to snowball quite hard, so... If you give him a good start, he can destroy a game, and that's just no fun for anyone. <sighs> Next band coming out from the League of Men is going to be the Train Protector, with their first ban being a Wisp. Wisp having that global presence just really punishes positional or out of position play rather. If you are even slightly caught away from your team, that Wisp can really put a hurting on you, bringing in another hero on top of you immediately and making you pay for walking away from all of your friends. Tree and Protector, another global presence, but in a very different way. Tree and Protector's living armor has a global presence, a Ten global cast range, rather, that can put basically a refraction or a very similar Five type of thing onto a hero or a tower or a building or anything else on the entire map. So that means you get Reserved. quite a few instances of damage block, the same way a refraction damage block works, except refraction blocks the entire attack. Tree and Protector's living armor only blocks a certain Dead amount of damage right of that attack. Early game though, it is completely Dieting. broken, I think. Well, perhaps not broken, completely ridiculous if that's one way to put it. It It is insane and will help you survive through any ganks. His other skills are very mediocre. He doesn't scale well into the late game. Really he is not a very good tri-lane hero. There's nothing that great about him except how absolutely preposterously ridiculous living armor is. The Fun Machine capitalizing here on the Ten lack of a Batrider ban, and they do pick up the Batrider just to try to uh, pull uh, enemy Five heroes out of position. Three. And you can tell the League of Men don't particularly enjoy dealing with those types of heroes, as the Wisp ban was there, and Wisp and Batrider both have the same strength of just punishing out of position play. Batrider, though, will be the pickup from the Fun Machine, taking advantage of that, and hopefully pulling people out of team fights and just getting a quick early kill to help everything go in their favor. He's also one of the best landing heroes in the game with his uh, sticky napalm and his ultimate and everything else about him just being absolutely crazy in lane. League of Men answer with the Gyrocopter and the Lone Druid. Gyrocopter equally good in lane. It, just in a very different way. Batrider has the slows and the damage. Gyrocopter has the single target burst of Rocket Barrage. And Rocket Barrage, especially if you get it to level 2 or 3, will just absolutely annihilate. And it's also one of the best early game spells, even the best level 1 spells, as it does do a 330 damage nuke to one hero if one hero Five does end up taking every remaining. single rocket. I believe I calculated that correctly the other day, but either way, it'll do pretty much your entire health. So... Lone Druid also being picked up. Lone Druid run usually as an offlaner. Sometimes in the Chinese scene, he has been run as a mid hero. So they're picking up their offlaner. They're picking up what's likely going to be their carry in the gyrocopter early. So the League of Men off to a good start. Fun Machine do pick up that Bane. And Bane is one of those heroes that gets very annoying to deal with unless you can stun him and silence him or just pick him off first. His Fiend's Grip and his Nightmare are very good single target spells just to kind of take someone out of a fight and so far the fun machine coming across Ten with a very unified remain. theme of just picking people off one by one so the bat rider can pull one hero out of a fight the bane can fiends grip one hero nightmare one hero and feeble another hero and pretty much just disable three heroes in one fell swoop like that and that is very very powerful in the middle of fights Back into the second ban phase here, the League of Men will ban out Nature's Prophet, not willing to contend with that global presence. The Wisp and the Nature's Prophet bans just show how much they don't want to deal with someone trying to punish them positionally. With the Fun Machine answering then with a Puck. Puck is very good actually at dealing with Batrider, and I say very good, Batrider still tends to beat Puck, but it is a lot closer than many other matchups, as Puck does have the phase shift, he does have the illusory orb. He is able to get away from the bat rider in some He's manner active. early game, and that's what a lot of heroes run into problems with, is they get slowed and then they can't turn, and then they get fireflied on top of, and that's the end of that. They give up first blood, they give up kills. 
even underneath the tower. The Bat Rider doesn't care. If they can't run away and he do he's doing an extra 30 or 40 damage per auto attack on top of his base damage, it tends to be a little bit crazy Dieting early game. Pick. Fun Machine banning out the Queen of Pain on top of that. They're trying to ban out all the mid heroes, it looks like. Try to limit League of Men's good mid hero presence. And a League of Men answer with a Warlock ban. Just with that team fight, his golems, dropping the golems there, tends to be pretty disruptive in the middle of team fights. Speaking of disruptive, Shadow Demon picked up by the League of Men, picking up their first support. The Disruption, the Soul Catcher, the Shadow, the Purge rather. The Shadow Poison, all very good skills. He's a fantastic support, though he has very little innate damage of his own. He does help everyone else put out a lot of damage, but his own damage doesn't work too well. That's why he's usually Ten coupled with something like Alina, really? something like a Lashrak. Who Lashrak. He sets up the. Yep, there's the Lashrak getting pulled out. He sets up their stuns very nicely with the disruption, and he needs them for the damage, as he just doesn't do enough on his own. But Lashrak with Lightning, Edict, Split Earth, his ultimate, can put out a lot of damage early game, especially with the Split Earth being able. being much easier to land after that disruption. Fun Machine coming back here with a Keeper of the Light pick. Keeper of the Light, a fantastic support just for counter pushing. And coupled with the Bane, they have a very good kill Ten potential in lane remaining. with the Sap, with the Nightmare, and the Keeper of the Lights illuminate on Five top of that. Remaining. Now they could be looking at something like a Phantom Lancer as they still do need their carry. So Phantom Lancer tends to be coupled with the Keeper of the Light very often as he is a very powerful... Uh, carry. Weaver is going to be picked up. Weaver could be a farming carry in the tri lane. More often than not though, she is an off lane. Um, semi-carry, I guess you could call it. She is very tough to kill uh, between her ultimate, between Sakuchi, and the bugs doing quite a bit of damage and minus armor is very helpful as well. So Weaver tends to be running the off lane as she, with that Sakuchi early game becomes very, Five very seconds, difficult to actually lock down and kill. Shadow Demon and Lashrak though can manage it as Weaver does have a very, Reserve very low time. health pool early game. If you can get a disruption and land the Lashrak stun before Weaver can Sakuchi, and that's that's key, is before Weaver can Sakuchi, you can get a kill there. League of Men looking to pick up a mid hero. Fun Machine looking to pick up most likely a farming tri lane carry. And they're into the last ban phase. So the League of Men might ban out the Phantom Lancer here, as I mentioned earlier, as he is very powerful with the Keeper and with the Bane. Other options would be, yep, something like a Luna. Something like a Luna would be very powerful as his. Uh, her, rather. Aura does add a lot of early game damage. And, uh, Fun Machine probably looking at banning out another mid hero. I'm not even sure who they could really ban out at this point, but Magnus is possible. But ten Magnus against Bat Rider, Bat Rider will win that nine times out of ten. So it's not exactly your Five best option. Remaining. There are some other mid heroes that they could use. I've seen Kunkka run there a little bit in Reserve the uh, Chinese scene. Not too much in the West here, but he is a possible pick. But really the Puck and the Queen of Pain were the two key bans here from the Fun Machine, and they will ban out the Magnus. But the Puck and the Queen of Pain being the two key bans, because they just they deal with the Bat Rider better than most other heroes can, and Bat Rider wants rune control to fill up that bottle usually, and Puck and Queen of Pain will both out rune control him majority of the time, so that'll be a little bit tougher matchups for him. So the League of Men Looking to pick up that middle hero. And I actually am having trouble of thinking what they could really go with here that'll contend with the Bat Rider. It's a very hard matchup, really, for Ten almost any hero. Remaining. And contending with a Bat Rider is not easy. But Five we'll see what remaining. the League of Men choose to go for here. Fun Machine does still have the Phantom Lancer option, does still Reserve have time. possibly. Ah, uh, hmm. I was gonna mention something else a little bit weirder, like the Tiny or something other melee, maybe the Sven, but a me that'd be a melee carry, but I'm not sure how well that would go up against a an aggressive tri lane with Gyro, Shadow Demon, and Lashrak, and it looks like the League of Men might offensively tri lane there with those three heroes, but the defensive tri lane coming out from the Fun Machine Outworld will be very Devourer. powerful. Outworld Devourer! Radiant that is something I didn't think pick. of. The Bat Rider against an Outworld. Outworld could definitely take that matchup, especially with the Astral Imprisonment. If he could get those off on the Bat Rider, leave the Bat Rider with 13 mana. He can't spam anything with 13 mana. So that is a very, very good pickup from the League of Men. And that is one of the very few heroes that can actually contend with a Bat Rider. Totally slipped my mind there. But. Fun Machine, probably going to pick up their farming carry here, but as I was saying, the Fun Machine has an incredible seconds, defensive maybe. tri lane here in the Bane and in the Keeper of the Light. They can really Five lay down seconds, the damage, maybe. lay down anything they want, and the Bane having that Nightmare and Enfeeble allows him to save 
the carry. If they do get in a hard spot, the Nightmare can really just stop someone in their tracks for quite a few seconds. And it also, on top of that, allows the Keeper of the Light to charge up his uh, Illuminate and do a whole bunch of damage to the Nightmare unit while he's asleep. And Bane following that up with the uh, Life Leech, Brain Sap, whatever it may be, doing pure damage. They can have a very high damage tri lane here. And coupling that with something like the Phantom Lancer's Lance, they have a Slow, they have Nightmare, they have Brain Sap, they have Illuminate, and they have infinite mana almost from the Keeper of the Light. So that would be a very powerful tri lane in itself. There are other options, of course, but I personally would go with the Phantom Lancer here and run a defensive tri lane and then see what the League of Men do. If they do decide to dodge that tri lane and run a defensive tri lane of their own, Weaver has the ability to deal with that, although, like I mentioned, Shadow Demon and Lashrat can lock him down. Mid will be a toss-up between Outworld and Batrider, so it really just depends on these tri-lane performances from both teams. And if the League of Men do decide to do the offensive tri-lane, then it'll end up being the Lone Ten Druid safe lane remaining. versus a Weaver, and that tends to be a toss-up. The Lone Druid, once he hits five about level 5 remaining. or so and gets the third level bear, does tend to win out that matchup Phantom a little bit better. Lancer. They will pick up the Phantom Lancer in the end. But the Lone Druid does tend to win that matchup, especially if he can get a lucky root on the Weaver. And after he gets a lucky root, possibly a kill, it, it does tend to get a lot harder for the Weaver, so that lane could also be a toss-up if the League of Men do decide to do an offensive try lane But let's hop into the game here. Picks are done, and we're going to introduce the Dire team here first. It's going to be Sid on the Outworld Destroyer, Fargo on the Lashrak, Ikalabob Ikalab on the Lone Druid, Pioneer on the Shadow Demon, and Oiboy on the Gyrocopter. Looking down here on the Radiant team, two seconds... Two second nap on the Phantom Lancer, Contempt on the Keeper of the Light, Acetone on the Bane, the Professor on the Weaver, and NMLY on the Batrider. It looks like all five from the Dire here are going to be heading to this bottom lane, looking to clear out the forest a little bit, set up that tri lane for themselves. Fargo does have the Observer Wards. No Sentry Wards picked up there, though. Oh, Sentry Wards on Iklob. So there will be Sentry Wards. They will likely be attempting to ward that pull cam, and it looks like there might be a level 1 engagement. The bear being spotted out by Contempt, but that means they have found him as well. And he is going to turn northwards to run here, with Sid getting the Astral Imprisonment, but it is only a 1 second, so they will get a couple right seconds, clicks in. But it looks like they won't be able to really capitalize on anything there. Should have led with Pioneer, perhaps, as Pioneer does have the 2.5 second disrupt into the Fargo done. Leading with that would have maybe netted them a kill, but the good move there from the Keeper of the Light running north instead of south just to try to get away. They will drop down an Observer Ward on the Magic Bush here. The Magic Bush spot here is very special, as you'll see in a little bit. It blocks the big camp as well as blocking the pole the camp. That begins. said, it is way out in the open, and as soon as the Radiant here do realize that the pole camp is warded, they will drop these Sentry Wards right somewhere in this area, I would imagine, possibly out in front of the camp damage. here, and that will be able to deward that, rather and uh, that'll give them easy access to their pull camp. So they will be able to deward that relatively easily, but it will cost them one, possibly two stacks, and that will hurt their pulling a little bit. Looks like League of Men will be running this defensive tri lane here. Fargo slowly catching up with the DD, but Oya Boy, Pioneer, and Lashrek coming down here, and uh, looking like they're gonna run that. I'll throw up the last hits and denies here just so you can get some early game notice. And it looks like Professor and Ikalob on the top lane here. There will be some harassment going back and forth. Ikalob throwing down the sentries up here, and that's why he actually bought them. He knew he would be in a matchup against the Weaver, and this allows him to harass the Weaver out continually and allows him to pretty much knock him out of lane all lane long, and that will help him win that lane. That said, that means they did have to use this Obser Observer Ward in the bottom lane. So that is a little bit of a loss, but the Professor finding out very quickly that there is a Sentry Ward up here, taking a lot of damage from Mikolov, and he will be forced to pop his salve relatively early. D Ward coming out from the Dire here. They will see the Ward on the Magic Bush and D Ward that in time for the two-minute er, uh, two minute neutral spawn. So they will have that back up in a moment or two, a couple seconds, well, 30 seconds or so. They likely will be able to... Uh, get the camp going and I'm pretty sure this ward doesn't de doesn't uh, block that camp not 100% positive But I'd imagine they would have realized that that if that would block it So they will be able to deward that and get their poles going Look at middle lane NMLY has uh, about 200 gold till his bottle at this point But he is 
getting a reasonable amount of experience, so that is good. Sid, quite a ways from his bottle, not even reasonably close, if he does choose to go to bottle. A lot of the times I see OD skip the bottle, so Fargo, body blocking the um, neutral camp here, and that will slow down their pulls again. And they might have to drop another observer ward, or another sentry ward, if they think that's warded. If they didn't see Fargo blocking that, it might have cost them another 100 gold there. So, we'll see what they decide to do, but that pull camp is going to be very important to the Radiance uh, try lane here. Lance getting thrown out on Oye Boy, just doing a little bit of her ass damage for him, as he does pretty much have infinite mana here on the Phantom Lancer, thanks to Contempt. But Contempt does not have his Chakra Magic yet, so it will be a little bit Thank coming. You. Weaver is reduced to jungling on the top lane here. He got pushed out of lane so heavily and has very little regen left. He does take the small centaur creep as he's just trying to leech experience as much as possible. Sid getting four stacks up on him in middle, and MLY just kind of pushing him back. And like I said, this lane is going to be a bit of a toss-up with five last hits on the Bat Rider and three last hits on the Obsidian Destroyer. He does have seven denies though, which is definitely important. That does rob NMLY of some experience, as you can see. About half a level, level, not quite a full half level, but right around there. And it looks like the Gyro will be caught out a little bit by that Phantom Lamp, and the Illuminate just missing him to the left side there. He will be able to retreat back a little bit. And uh, looking at this try lane real quick, the there, there's pretty much a toss up as far as last hits go. Gyro is at 16, Phantom Lancer is at 16, Phantom Lancer is at 16. Gyro is going to get a little bit out of a 17, but like I said, it's it's pretty much a toss up at this point. There's no real clear winner here so far. We'll see if they can manage to get a kill on either side, as the dire try lane here does actually have quite a bit of kill potential between the two supports here. If they could catch out something like Contempt, if they could catch out someone like the Bane they would be able to manage that kill. They will buy sentry wards, drop it down on that magic bush. I'm not sure if that's perfectly on the magic bush, but I'm not sure it'll matter. They do de-ward the sentry ward over here and drop down the anti-pull ward again. So that's going to keep the Radiant here from pulling anymore again. They have one stack up in that uh, neutral camp here, so they will be able to, you know, get at least one there, and they will be able to uh, double pull if they do feel the need for that, if they can even can manage that without it getting contested, they will be able to do that, and it looks like the first blood will go out from the lone druid here, the professor managed to kill off the bear it looked like, I'm not totally positive, but since we're doing a replay cast, we're going to rewind and cheat a little bit, and go back another 10 seconds, yep, sorry about missing that, but there's, nope, he's just got a lot of harass out on Ikalob here, and he does just manage to kill him with the right clicks, the bear just getting a couple hits in there and getting that last hit through the Geminate attack. Very good job from the Professor. I'm sorry for missing that, but luckily we are doing a replay cast, so I can cheat a little bit. Oi boy getting harassed up. And uh, the Illuminate will hit and do quite a bit of damage to both Pioneer and Oi Boy. So they will have to, you know, pop the wand for Oi Boy. And he will get lanced again. They're really just trying to harass him out of lane. And it, it hasn't shown too much yet as the last hits are still reasonably even. He will pop a salve though. And Fargo taking a little bit of extra damage from that Illuminate. So he will pop that salve and try to get back into lane. Weaver here getting very low now. He will have to Sakuchi out. But the... Uh, Advantage is still his there. He does he does did get the first blood, he did get that kill. And the last hits are relatively even, so he will be able to pick up a very early ring of health. Very good for him. He will be able to get a little bit more sustain in lane with that. Bat Rider picks up his tranquil boots, and that'll allow him once again to get a little bit of sustain, though he does not go for the bottle. And I'm a little bit questioning this decision as he he does need the mana. He really needs the mana, especially against an OD. He desperately needs the mana. He might still do relatively well in this lane, I'm not saying he won't, as he is a little bit behind, four less hits behind the OD, but that's not too, too big a deal, but I don't know, I, I personally do think he needs the mana against an OD, and really at all in the middle lane, I think he would need the mana, as 20 mana adds up fast when you get six, seven stacks up on someone, and especially with that Astral Imprisonment. Uh -uh. Looks like on the bottom lane, still relatively quiet. The Phantom Lancer has gotten up his Tranquil Boots as well, so he will get tons of lane sustain, and that is pretty much all he needs to get, stay in this lane and farm almost indefinitely. Between he Contempt's second show. level of Chakra Magic and his uh, Tranquil Boots, he can pretty much never leave this lane. Light. We will protect Ikalov has hit level 6, and that will allow him to get into that melee form and get a whole lot of extra health there, so he will be in a little bit less danger of dying from the... Weaver here. Another Illuminate coming through, and that Illuminate doing a fantastic job at not pushing the lane 
but still keeping all the heroes back. As you can see, every time he aims it just behind the creep wave, he makes sure that he doesn't hit the creeps full out every time. And it looks like NMLY is going to come top for the gank here. He does have his lasso, so he will be able to drag that lone druid back to the field, and he will pop the lasso, start dragging him back, but the weaver not quite close enough to get any kind of damage out. Kind of a wasted lasso there, I must say. He does get the damage out now, but a root coming out from the lone druid Ikalov here, and he will get a bunch of harass damage on him. NMLY just wasting that uh, lasso, because it has a very low duration at this point, only a three second duration, and he doesn't have a force staff, so it, he didn't really drag the lone druid anywhere didn't do any damage to the lone druid himself didn't have his firefly up he has two levels in firefly but he just did not have the mana for all of that and once again it comes down to the mana he didn't have the mana to drop the uh firefly he didn't have the mana to sticky napalm him continually flame break him anything like that after popping that lasso that's about all he had mana for so that's just not helping him get that kill Weaver is going relatively low, but he does have that Ring of Health, so he will likely just stand back a little bit and try to regen up. He also has his Aquila here, so he will regen some mana at a reasonable rate. So he's doing well as far as lane sustain goes. Sid has his bottle up now, so that means NMLY is going to be faced with constant Astral Imprisonment spam, especially with 1,000, 1,100 mana coming out from the OD. He's going to be able to sap all the... Uh, intelligence from NMLY constantly with that Astral and Prison spam. His four levels up in the Essence Aura, two up in Astral and Prison, one in Arcane Orb, and one in Sanity's Eclipse. It's a bit of a strange build from what I've seen. Usually it tends to just be, looks like, uh, nope, just a little bit of harass coming out. Anyway, it looks like it, it usually ends up being nothing in Arcane Orb for quite a while, and then just going for the four Astral, four Essence Aura very, very quickly. Looks like there's going to be some action down here. Oi Boy getting hit with a little bit of nuke damage from the Phantom Lancer and the Bane, and the Illuminate not quite finishing off. He has 17 health left, but the Phantom Lancer just cannot chase. He has 22 second cooldown left on that Doppelwalk, and no mana for the Spirit Lance, so he just was not able to clean up that kill on Oi Boy. No damage really going out. A little bit of damage going out, but not a whole lot going out on the support for the Radiant here, so they definitely got the advantage during that fight, with Gyrocopter having to run all the way back to base. Sentry Ward's coming out on the bottom here as they did get this D-Ward again and D-Warded the Magic Bush Pull Ward. So they will be able to pull in a few minutes if they do decide to stack that camp. But it looks like he's going to choose to stack the top camp here for a third time. So triple stack coming out there. He will be able to farm that up for a bit of gold and experience for himself as the Keeper is a very good jungle farmer, especially with these triple stacks. He didn't quite get the triple stack, but hey, he does ha still have a double stack, and that's still going to be plenty of experience and gold for him. And he will take to farm that up immediately. Oh! Lane here looks like he's try they're trying to go for a little bit of aggression, just trying to get something down here. The Keeper of the Light, noticing that though, does choose to retreat out. A little bit of damage going out to the Courier, but not managing to get that kill. They're looking and hunting for a kill, but they're just not finding anything here on this aggressive try lane. And it's really just wasting a lot of time for them. As they if they don't find a kill, they don't have the advantage. And that means that Phantom Lancer is gonna get 51 last hits in the first 10 minutes. And that's a very good farm rate. The maximum last hits, I believe believe is 82 in the first 10 minutes so he does do rather well not getting all of them as obviously it's very very tough to manage to get all of the last hits but definitely getting a large amount of them it looks like there's gonna be initiation out here on Pi and Pi is going to self-disrupt, good self-disrupt here, but they're waiting in anticipation for that kill. Two seconds is going to dive that, but does not go for the kill, taking too much damage, and Lasso coming out, pulling Oi Boy back. Two seconds might go down here, and he does go down. He didn't have that double walk for quite a few more seconds, so he will end up going down. And MLY is going to get the kill on Fargo, and Oi Boy coming back trying to save him, but not able to do much there. The call down wouldn't have done much of anything, so he chooses not to drop it. And the nuke coming through from Contempt again. The Shadow Demon did survive with by the skin of his teeth. The Phantom Lancer just could not dive that far to get that last hit in, and he did not have the Phantom Lance up there. So he, he was forced to retreat and not get that kill, and he did end up going down anyway thanks to all the damage, and that Diabolic Edict doing huge damage from Lashrak on him. Looks like the Weaver's just throwing out a little bit more harass. He does have his phase boots up, so that's going to be some extra damage. And that's 24 extra damage. But with Geminate Attack procking every 2.5 seconds here, he will be able to get 24 extra damage for his first attack, 24 extra damage for his second attack, every 2.5 seconds. So that's an extra 48 damage coming out from those phase boots. Very good pickup coming out from him. NMLY, still no bottle here. Uh, 
He it's questionable. He's down to 185 mana now. He did help out on that kill on the bottom. So that is definitely very nice from him. But it just did not seem like he could do that much. He just did not have the mana. He does pick up a lucky regen rune, and that will help him with those mana problems right now. But long term, he might not be able to do too much. Harass coming out here on the bottom lane. Oi boy going really low again. Had to pop the wand to get a little bit of extra health there. And he just also does not have that lane sustain that the Phantom Lancer has. The Phantom Lancer pulling out those Tranquil Boots. Has the life. Has the mana thanks to the Chakra Magic. And Gyro is not a mana intensive hero. He has a 90 mana nuke in the barrage. And a 50 mana flat cannon. And a 125 mana ultimate. And he already has 500 mana brought out on him. So there's really no need for any kind of mana sustain. So he should be looking for something more more along the lines of those health sustain. And Dyer's the poor man shield is a is decent attack. pickup. The range block is only 10 damage though, so I I worry about that. About that. Getting that pickup on a range here just never really seems worth it to me for the couple hundred gold it costs. I would much rather go for something like a tranquil boots on him instead of the treads as well. Try to get that in lane sustain that that can bring him. That's like pretty much a free salve every what, 30 seconds or so? Let's check that out. Yeah, every 60 seconds, I'm sorry. He does get a 250 heal, and that is huge if you can wait for it. It's not the biggest heal, it's not as big as a salve, but right now, if he does did have that, he'd be sitting at Dyer's close to 600 health. He'd be sitting attack. at a little bit over 600 health, actually, and he'd be a lot safer in lane with that. Granted, he wouldn't have the extra health and uh, attack speed given to him by treads, but you can always disassemble the uh, Tranquil Boots later in the game to make treads out of them, and that does help out with their usefulness early game, and the Lone Druid does choose to go for the Tranquil Boots as well, and the Phase Boots up on his bear as well as the Orb of Venom. All very nice pickups from him, and that's going to allow him to do a little bit more harassing lane. Weaver has been doing a relatively good job of staying alive, that Ring of Health really doing a lot for her, as well as the, three, uh, the armor boost from the Ring of Aquila doing quite a bit for her. The 9 damage helps as well. So between those two items, she gets a lot of extra plus damage. And that plus damage really comes in handy when you look at Geminate's attack. Every 2.5 seconds, get that second attack. You get all that damage proccing twice as much. So it's very helpful for him. The OD is looking to gank top a little bit. It looks like Professor is very hard to kill as he is on a Weaver. He has his ultimate. He has Sakuchi. They do drop the ward, and he will lead off with that Astral Imprisonment. The Weaver is going to try to Sakuchi out, of course, and he will Sakuchi right away from the Sentry Ward, possibly seeing that that was dropped. He will Sakuchi in the correct direction. Bat Rider, in the meantime, does pick up a kill here on bottom on that Gyrocopter, coming out with that last. So he did have enough mana for that, luckily, as the Weaver or the uh, OD didn't have any hand in that gang. So he does manage to pick up the kill there, and that will hurt the offensive tri lane even more. I didn't see quite what happened there. I was too busy watching the top lane try and get that kill. So I'm sorry about that one, but that just kind of ruins the tri lane. At this point, they should pretty much just abandon tri lane. Bringing the gyro back down here again is just not going to work. And the Outward Devourer does manage to clean up that kill on the Weaver on the top lane here. Between Iqlobob and the Outworld, getting that kill. Very nice kill for them, as they really desperately need some kind of momentum here. And killing off the Weaver is very helpful, as the Weaver is sitting at 55 last hits. Very, very strong in lane against the Lone Druid. The Lone Druid Dyer's not managing to kill her off early game, attack. so that does help him out Radiant considerably. Astral Imprisonment going down on the Batrider here, and he will just be chased away with a little bit of damage coming out from the OD. Not too, too much, but Radiant's just top enough. Tower that top tower attack. taking a lot of damage from the bears here, the bear combo. And uh, that bear does have the uh, demolish, and that will help him do 40% bonus damage to the building, knocking down that first tower and drawing Radiant's the first tower, tower blood fallen. kind of thing here. So they will get the first tower off the map in favor of the Lone Druid, and Lone Druid does get the last hit, which will be very good. But as you can see, this tri lane here, stagnating. They're standing around, they're not doing anything, they're not getting last hits, they're not doing anything. Gyro's at 37 last hits, 15 minutes in. At this point, he really just needs to abandon tri lane, go top to the safe lane, and try to get something up there, because coming on this bottom lane, he's getting nothing compared to the Phantom Lancer, who's leading the charts with 76 last hits. He's very rich, he has the Blade of Alacr Alacrity up, and is bringing out the full defusal. So going the typical Phantom Lancer defusal. And it looks like they will be trying to bring Dyer's in a gank here on bottom on attack. him. Might be a little bit too little too late. Sid will find him.
him though. Let's see if he doppel walks for it. Yep, immediate doppel walk, and the OD does have the added bonus of his arcane orb, doing a lot of damage to illusions here. So he will have some bonus damage there. But when there's 200 illusions, well, rather eight illusions or so, it doesn't really help that much. Sure, you can clear the illusions faster, but he can spawn them as fast as you can clear them. So that's not going to do too too much in their favor. Oi boy, being the real counter here, as much of the counter as they can get with the flat cannon being able to clear illusions a lot faster than most, but still not a fantastic counter as the Phantom Lancer is so farmed so far, leaving the charge with 77 last hits. That's going to be a little bit tough to deal with there. The Lone Druid is coming in second here. Astral Imprisonment coming out on the Keeper of the Light, it looks like, and they will not land the stun. The Oh wow, the Blinding Light pushing everyone back, not letting the land stun. Sid looks like he might be going down, he's very low here. Contempt trying to clean up that kill, but he will bottle up and manage to live through that. Boy Boy going on Contempt here now with the Rocket Drive doing a ton of damage. The homing missile might catch him out there. Not going to do quite enough damage. 69 health left on him. Oi Boy is nightmared up. Lashrak stun coming out on the Phantom Lancer, but Lashrak will go down to him. Two second swap, no mana left for the Lance, but Oi Boy will go down to that Weaver anyway. Pinehead is just a second too late with that disruption. He will be on the run now as well. Not much going to be able to come out from him, though. The Professor looks like he will be going out after this kill. He can just time lapse out, and he will. Not quite getting the kill, but will he continue diving? Looks like he will continue diving. He really wants that kill. Taking tons of tower damage and dying in the meantime. He does manage to give up that kill. Possibly not the best move from him, but he does get the Shadow Demon kill. But trading a Shadow Demon for a Weaver, they will take that trade every time on the Dire. Losing one of your cores for a support is never going to be a favorable trade. That said, the Radiant definitely did get the favorable trade there, with getting, I believe, three kills Dyer's out of that, and the Dire attack. only getting one. Boy Boy and the OD coming back down to this bottom lane just to try to pressure it out a little bit. They realize that this Dyer's bottom lane did get completely oppressed attack. and they are trying to push back a little bit, but it's you can't push against a Keeper of the Light like this, especially when the Keeper of the Light is already level 7. He has 3 points up in Illuminate, 3 points up in the Chakra, and that means he never has to stop spamming Illuminate. Radiant's so they're not going to be able attack. to really deal with this. Fargo is about to find him. Contempt decides to TP out as Fargo may have gotten vision of him there. Contempt didn't throw out the... Very contempted. Contempt TP it away, the Lashrak there, Fargo did not throw out the stun, so not much coming either way. Outworld Devourer will get the kill on the Batrider, dropping the ultimate for that one. I am missing kills left and right today, I am sorry about that one, but he will get the kill there. Lone Druid farming up still. He has the uh, Hyperstone. Looks like he's probably going to go either for the Mjolnir, but usually the build-up for that is the Maelstrom first, so he may be going for the Assault Cuirass first, which is a little bit odd. Usually you see a damage item or so on the Lone Druid first. That tends to be the Maelstrom since the Armlet nerf. The Armlet now actually does the HP remove on the bear, so it tends to be less picked up if never picked up on the bear, as the Maelstrom just gives you a lot more bonuses for the price. Weaver coming at this top lane is going to harass up Ikalabob a little bit. Here, Ikalab doing a little bit of harass does get a root out on the Professor, but almost losing his bear in the meantime. The bear is going to have to go back and heal up, or possibly just die. Ikalab does have the resummon on that, so he does choose to use that instead of sending him back. So he does have that resummon back in another two minutes, so he has to be careful, but he does have that extra full health there now. So, bottom, er, yeah, bottom tower for the dire has taken a lot of damage, and it looks like it may be going down here to the image army of the PL. The Illuminate forcing them all back, and they will try to go for the deny. Fargo misses that deny just barely, and the Phantom Lancer does manage to get that kill. He has finished his complete Yasha now, and it looks like there's going to be some aggression up here on top. The Professor forced to use his ultimate. Ikalab getting another root, though, is going to be able to damage him out there, and that Hyperstone coming in handy. In the meantime, the Keeper of the Light gets a kill here on the bottom on the Shadow Demon. Can't watch both lanes at the same time. Must have been that Illuminate doing tons of damage to the supports here. It is quite crazy how much damage that does. And it looks like the Buckler is coming out for the Keeper here. Or the Buckler is already out. The Mechanism almost done. He's a couple, maybe 600, 700 gold away from the completed Mech. And Mech is going to be huge here if they do ever decide to team fight, rather than these just spread out single pickoffs that I've been spread out and across the map for repeatedly. So if they do decide to team fight, that Mech is going to be huge. A very early Mech. Well, Comparatively, a very early mech for a support keeper is going to be very nice. Checking out the items. Oh, jeez. Wrong button, I believe. Ah, I don't know. I'm just going to stop pressing buttons, really. I, it's got to be one of the... There we go. Wrong button. I was looking at the wrong side. The items, comparing them from the teams, 
there is no mech coming out yet from the Radiant here, so they are going to be at a disadvantage there. But not too big of a disadvantage, as the Lone Druid is getting tons of farm. And NML Wide sitting just outside of reach here. He has farmed his Blink Dagger, which is going to be a huge pickup for him. They look like they're trying to gank the Lone Druid. Maybe if they push out this lane a, bit, a little bit, the NMLY will run into the Lone Druid, and he does try to lasso him up, but doesn't lasso the main Lone Druid instead of the bear. So the bear is looking at getting an entangle on him using those phase boots. Lashrak going down on the bottom lane here to the Phantom Lancer. Once again, spread out skirmishes left and right. NMLY does get rooted up by the bear. The bear does get nightmared and almost killed off, but not quite. He does survive with 69 health. So the, these fractured engagements are really getting to me. I keep missing kills, picking the wrong engagement to follow. And the Lone Druid does resummon his bear for another full health bear here. Pinator is a little bit low on the bottom lane. It looks like the Keeper of Light has picked up the mechanism, so that will be very helpful in the sustain of his team. And he just has a very tanky team overall. Between the Weaver being nearly impossible to kill, the uh, Phantom Lancer having 900 life, not exactly tanky, but that Doppel Walk will help his survivability. The Bane with the Brain Sap will help his as well. He has picked up his Arcane Dyer's Boots, so he can spam that out a little bit. Attack. The Professor is almost at the uh, full Lincolns now. He has a couple hundred gold left for that Lincolns, so he is going to get that soon and be even tougher to kill. Looks like they're going on two second snap down here, but he does just doppel walk away. They did lay down this ward, but just not able to really get him. Pioneer getting really low against those images. One more Phantom Lance could kill him off if he chooses to die for that one. He will just throw out the Lance against the creep, though, looking to start an image army, but the Gyro decides to quell that right away and pops the Black Cannon to kill off the entire creep wave as well as the illusions. Lone Druid does pick up the Mjolnir, and it, or rather the Maelstrom, looking for the Mjolnir. A couple hundred gold away from him. He does choose to go for that as his first item. First major item, rather. And he... I think he made the right choice there. The Mjolnir does put out a lot of damage with that chain lightning, and that is very helpful for farming waves as well as farming uh, enemy heroes as much as he can. And uh, that just that ends up doing a lot of damage if they can continually proc that over and over, which the Mjolnir is very good at. With the attacks being granted from that Hyperstone, it tends to do quite a lot of damage. Weaver having to Sakuchi away. He does choose to re-engage though on Ikolob, getting a couple hits out, but that bear is very tanky. Having 1900 health and 17 armor is very tough to deal with. Push coming out on this bottom lane. The Keeper of the Light will annihilate the entire creep wave. Images being sent in just to throw out a little bit of damage against Pioneer here. Pioneer is getting relatively low already just from the Mana Burn. The Mana Burn doing huge damage to him as well as the hits from the images themselves. Morin just coming out from two second Radiant's snap. Two second nap attack. rather. And he doesn't have a whole lot of mana left, but just enough to engage against Pioneer. And it looks like he will actually get this kill from the images alone. There's not much Pioneer could really do there. Gyro does get the keeper kill on the top here. Fargo in the trees, just trying to ward off the any uh, aggression against him. Pops the Diabolic Egg and helps get that kill against attack. the keeper. So, so far, it's a support for a support. The bear trying to change that, though, trying to get a first or second hit root against Astone here. Astone will get Astral imprisoned up, and that is going to be helpful in securing that kill if they can. And the Lashrak stun misses. He does not aim that correctly, but the OD just does not care. Dropping the ultimate for the kill there, doing 600 damage down there, 557 or so against that Bane with the huge, huge intelligence gap there. He does manage to get that kill in one Radiant's solid hit. Fargo popping the attack. Diabolic Edict to try to push out the tower a little bit. He has chosen to go for the Split Earth and Diabolic build just to get a lot of damage up against those towers as soon as possible while still getting a very, very good stun. The Professor gets the kill Radiant's on this top tower, tower, and that will buy him his Lincolns. That's going to be a huge pickup for them. They're going to have a lot of trouble locking him down now, as he can shr shrug away one spell every 17 seconds, and that's going to be let him just kind of walk all over the map. Unless they commit a lot of heroes to that, they're not really going to be able to lock him down. Two second snap has the uh, ultimate aura up and does buy the recipe for the Manta, and that'll help him get up his image army as his, those images do proc more images. So getting those images up is going to be a lot easier now that he has that Manta, on top of giving him some survivability. He has a relatively low HP pool, even if he does have 19 armor coming out now. That's, that's a huge, huge amount for only being 25 minutes in. Let's swap over to the net worth charts right now. He's topping about 10,000 on those charts with the Lone Druid shrugging right behind him at about 9,400. And he's going to be close 
not quite up there with the Phantom Lancer, but very, very close. The Weaver coming next in line at 8,000 gold, and the OD right behind him at 7,400. That Rider, 6,500. Gyro coming down here. He's sixth in line. The mid tower does go down without any real reprisal from the Radiant. Thanks to that there. The bear doing tons of damage against towers, and that's very, very helpful for taking them down quickly with that 40% extra damage coming out from him. Weaver does pick up the Lincolns there, and Gem coming out from Fargo. That's going to be a very, very key pickup, helping to deny vision and kill off those sentries as often as possible. But attack. that said, they're going up against a Phantom Lancer that has his defusal, and he, it's only level 1. He can upgrade it whenever he feels like it, really. But he has the defusal, and he has the Manta. So he is very, very farmed. And a farmed PL is nothing to shrug at. It, it's very tough to deal with a PL, especially if he does decide to go for something like a heart as his next item. It's going to be very tough to deal with him. NMLY does end up picking up that fa the uh, rather four staff, not the phase. Picks up the four staff, and that will allow him to get a bit of distance when he chooses to go for those lassos. Acetone has picked up his magic wand. No real change for him. Professor, like I said, picking up that Lincoln. Also picking up a magic wand. No real change there. Pioneer is caught out a little bit here. The professor getting a little bit of damage on him if he wants to. Popping the phase boots, but he does walk straight into several here. The disruption coming out on Pioneer himself just to try to save him from that damage. And the Professor diving in deep here and getting a lot of damage out on that bear. The Professor tanking out that uh, spell with the Lincolns and does manage to get the kill on the Shadow Demon. Ikolov here, bear is killed off and the kill coming out here on the Outworld Devourer. Tons of damage coming out on Oiboy as well. Oiboy will fall. Batrider getting the Lashat kill as well. This is a four for nothing trade with the mech coming out to heal them up to almost fill health. NMLY is the only one with any damage on him and they will just try to farm out this tower but that backdoor protection is a little bit too much for the Weaver at this point in time. A four for nothing trade coming out there. That was just a bad fight overall from the Dire and that fight Radiance really spawned out of the Shadow attack. Demon just being caught out of position. He was out at the bottom of this ramp while the Weaver was also out of position, but the Dyer was not able to capitalize immediately upon that. They will be going for the Roshan here, but the Spear Bear looks like he will scout that out. And the wards here are only Radiant wards, so Spirit Bill will, Bear will scout that out. Then the Nightmare will take him out of the fight for a little bit. Brain Sap coming out on him, and they will just drop a little bit of damage on him, but not a whole lot, nothing that he should be too, too concerned about. The Professor going back towards the Roshan here, just trying to finish this off. As Roshan is at 2,500 health or so, so he will be able to kill that off. Fargo taking huge damage from that Illuminate. Half health just from that alone. Bear trying to initiate in, taking a little bit more damage, but not getting much of anything there. Fargo throwing out the stun, but not hitting anything. Bear dropping out those illusions, and the Professor getting crocked out and killed by that lone druid. The Chain Lightning looks like it crocked the... Oh! <laughs> The Shrek goes down, and there's another fight on the backside here, another split fight. Two-second nap does get the kill on the Gyrocopter, and Weaver manages to get the kill over there. Lone Druid picks up the Keeper of the Light. Pioneer is going to go down here as well. There's a two fights going on. Can't keep up with both of them. Ass oh, wow. Acetone going down to that Outworld Devour ultimate. The uh, Ikolov getting caught out here a little bit and getting knocked up onto that ledge, and that will not be able to get that kill as he will just TP out. Sid a little bit caught out of position here in the middle of the river, but he does have a four staff, so he should Daya's be quite all right. NMLY pushing the Lone Druid up onto that ledge, and that's very good thinking from the Lone Druid, realizing right away that as soon as he got knocked up there, it was against a Phantom Lancer Daya's and a Bat. Bat used his uh, ultimate already that fight, and he had just used his only other disrupting spell in the Flame Break, so the Lone Druid could TP away completely unimpeded. Looks like the Dire will go back and try to take this Roche. And Roche is only still sitting at 3,000 health. So they will be able to knock that down relatively, relatively quickly thanks to Sid's Orb here. They will get that kill and Ikolob takes the Aegis. Contempt throws out the uh, Illuminate and again hitting Fargo. Fargo has no boots. I'm not sure if he ever had boots but he is incredibly slow. That is that is quite ridiculous to watch him just kind of like lollygag around. But he is very slow. He has no boots. He has a magic wand. He has wards. But he is looking extremely poor. He has 668 net worth. Compare that to the Bane, the next lowest on the map, at 2600. And that allows him to have arcane boots, to have wards, to have a wand, to have TPs even. He is doing quite well as the very, very, very poor support in Fargo. It does not look like he's going to get... Anywhere near that level of farm relatively soon. 
he does drop out some wards here, just throwing down some sentries and observers, just trying to find places to drop those. But the Radiant may have spotted Dyer's that out as they have their own ward there, so they may have been able to see that and may deward that as soon as they can. Weaver throwing out the bugs. That does lower armor a little bit, and it does do also Dyer's a little bit of damage. It's not a huge amount of damage, but I do believe it managed to get the kill on Fargo as Weaver himself was dead when Fargo died. So it was a weird chain, but it might have been the bugs on Dyer's Fargo. Possibly a Geminate attack, attack just following him out, getting that kill. NMLY looks like he might be going for the Shivas, picking up the plate mail, and a huge stack here, a triple stack coming out for the VPL. He does pop his Manta to get those illusions rolling, and he might be going for the Reaver after this stack. He has 3,200 gold, so if he chooses to go for that Reaver, he's going to be extremely tanky, and I'm not sure they'll ever be able to kill him off. At this point, it's very tough as he has all those illusions. He has the Manta, he has 1,200 life, so it is going to be tough for him to kill off, but if he does choose to go for the Heart next, it's going to be even tougher. Once he gets tons of health and those illusions get really tanky, it's going to be damn near impossible. Plate mail up on the lone druid. Another hyperstone. That bear is attacking extremely quickly now. Looks like he's going to be going for, going for the assault cuirass. Very, very typical next item for the lone druid and a very good pickup. They need the armor against the PL illusions and he needs the attack speed because more attack speed means more chain lightning procs. And as you can see, these PL illusions are already really tanky and able to beat up on that bear very easily already. But that is thanks to the Reaver. He has picked up the Reaver on the PL, so that will be able to help him. And it looks like the Professor is going to initiate here on Fargo. Fargo having almost no life already. He will likely go down to this Reaver. NMLY pulling Oyboy out, but the ultimate drop by Sid not doing enough. NMLY going down to the Outlaw Devourer, but Phantom Lancer getting the Gyrocop to kill. Sid Fiend's gripped up, and Astone will manage to help the Phantom Lancer with that kill. And on the backside, the Professor managed to get one kill and another kill on the Shadow Demon. And it looks like he might get a kill on Ikalob here. He does still have his ultimate, so if he chooses to time lapse out, he can get some of the health back. And Ikalob just running away. The bear, very, very low health, but managing to get away so far. And the Illusion may not be able to get that kill. It doesn't look like he has quite enough damage there. But once again, that was a four for one trade. They gave away the Bat Rider, but they took the OD. They took the Gyro. Gyro, extremely poor. He has gotten a Manta. But I really don't think the Manta was the right choice as a first item here. It provides him with very little damage. It does provide some, middle some survivability. Attack. It's not great in survivability either. The Manta being a just a good general all-purpose item. But it does not provide the damage that Gyrocopter needs. And Gyro is extremely poor at 8,000 for the carry. He's not looking too great. So that gold would have definitely been better spent on something like a Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade being very cheap, it's only 3,000 gold, but it does provide 22 damage and 30 attack speed. So it gives you good DPS, but it also gives you good survivability. So when you do get targeted during this fight, you can just back off. You can you can disengage with the Shadow Blade. Granted, the dust and the ward's not going to be Dyer's too, too favorable towards him, attack. but it does allow him at least a chance of surviving. Whereas right now, he has honestly almost no chance. And with that, he just cannot truly survive very well, and that's just not going to be very helpful for him. Spirit Bear proc procking the uh, Lincoln's Orb on the Professor, but he will just casually stroll away, as there is no real follow-up coming out from League of Men here. They've kind of uh, lagged behind the Spirit Bear, so they were not able to get that. And now the uh, Keeper of the Light is going to recall the Professor into the bottom lane, and it looks like they're going to try to push out this tower. Two second nap is looking extremely rich right now as he has finished off that heart. And at this point, it's almost reached the point of no return where that heart making him extremely, extremely tanky. 2400 health and 26 armor. He's going to be almost unkillable, honestly, against this dire team. They would have to really get a lot of very fortuitous things against him in the OD alt hitting him and doing a lot of damage, and the lone druid being able to focus him, and the other four heroes on the radiant just kind of disappearing off the map for a while, attack. and then maybe they'll be able to kill him, but at this point, it is looking very grim for them, especially with the Aegis being reclaimed in 60 seconds. The lone druid will only have one life instead of two lives. That said, they are doing the split push thing, and while they are knocking on the base's door here, they are, oh, the NMLY will pop the lasso. Pioneer is going to go down immediately there, and that does allow them to take this tier 3 tower. They are knocking on the base's door, and I don't know what the Dire are thinking here with two of their carries pushing the bottom lane. They are going to give away this Rax for free, and not only that, they're also giving away the Shadow Demon kill. They are TPing back now, and the Lone Druid is going to manage to get some damage out here, but the two second snap, two second nap is going to come back and manage to get a lot of damage out of Ikolov, and Ikolov looks like he'll be going down here. He does have the Aegis, so he will come back up momentarily, 
and he is cutting it very close to that egg. It's only a couple seconds left. He will be able to get some damage out on Asuta, but he will be coming back, and he will be going down. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane here, Sid will be going down, but he does get the Batrider. Bane does end the lone Druid's dominating streak, and Oi Boy getting the call down thrown out. But Bane managing Dyer's to get away, and the Professor also managing to just run away. Looks like that was a two for two trade. But the Lone Druid and the OD versus the Support Keeper of the Light and the Gyre and the not the Gyre rather the Bat Rider going down for the Radiant. So it's also going to be a little bit of a bad trade for them. But at this point, they really need any trade they can take because that mid tower did not manage to go down while the dot or the radiant here did get the tower and also got the melee racks so that ranged racks is going to be at half health half health and regenerating but regenerating slowly there's a huge advantage here, obviously, for the Radiant. So why don't we take a look at the graphs here. Gold graph, 10,000 gold, so not nearly as bad as some games I've seen, but certainly not good for them either. At the same time, experience graph just peaking up over 10,000. So that's going to be a little bit of a hill to climb on both counts, but not unkillable, not unwinnable, but definitely tough. At this point, Boy Boy just needs to farm up that Rapier. And rapier Gyro, only way to win games, obviously, when this happens. But... It is going to be very, very hard for them to pull this out, but I have seen a Rapier Gyro manage to turn things around. He does get up the Helm of the Dominator, but once again, no real damage, just getting him some survivability. Helm of the Dominator is usually picked up on Gyro so that he can clear Ancient Stacks, but there are no Ancient Stacks. So he's going to have a hard time really putting that to good use, and they will come out of the base in four here so that they can pick up something on the OD. Dyer's yep, they're going to pick up the Mystic Staff, attack. working towards that sheep, and he will pick up the whole sheep. There's no point in saving gold when you're this far behind, obviously. You need all the items you can get. So while he won't have buyback when the fight comes, he will Dyer's have a sheep, and that sheep will be attack. very important. Pioneer taking some damage Dyer's from the Professor does choose to self-destruct. Fargo throwing out the stun and missing again. Pioneer is going to look like he's going to go down here. Two more hits from the Professor. He will go down. Professor does manage to use his ult to just get on out of there, and he will get away scot free there. Gyro block pop the flat cannon to clear out the images here, so he will. And NMLY getting the lasso up on Sid. Sid getting pulled out, but that is going to pull him right into the middle of the enemy team. No ultimate up on him. He will actual prison himself, but it looks like he may go down momentarily as two second nap is standing right on top of him. He does sheep up NMLY, but he will go down to that Phantom Lancer in the next second. Phantom Lancer has 4,600 gold, so he's looking well off as can be. And he'll just hammer on that tier three on the top lane. And there's not a whole lot the Dyer can do here with the OD down. That was the main, main source of damage. And it would be nice to drop out a five-man ultimate here. Maybe they would have a chance at that point, but Oi Boy getting in the middle of the fight and just right-clicking away with the flat cannon to clear illusions and everything, and it pushes them off a little bit, but Ikalov will be going down. The Phantom Lancer hitting Godlike, and Pioneer might be going down just to the images here. The stun coming out from Vargo to slow them down, but the Professor coming in and will too hit him with his nice MKB that I missed a little bit earlier. He will get that kill. And uh, looks like that's going to be another X. Two X down now, and a huge advantage Dyer's going to the Radiant here. Looks like GG's might be coming out in a moment or two, as three heroes are down, including the two main cores Dyer's for the Radiant and uh, the Dyer here. It looks like they might have just gone a little bit too greedy, and. On top of that greed, they managed, they, they lost the aggressive tri-lane on bottom, and that really, really hurt the gyrocopter, and really, really helped the Phantom Lancer. Had they been able to lock down the Phantom Lancer a bit better, it might have been a little bit of a different story, but free farm Phantom Lancer against a free farm gyro might have been a bit more fair. So I'm not going to claim that the League of Men lost this one at the draft, as you can come back against the Keeper of the Light Phantom Lancer draft. And it looks like Oi Boy will get drunk into the middle of the heroes, and be burst out immediately. And like, a, like I was saying, and Big ult coming out from Sid, but not doing nearly enough, and he will get Phantom Lancer's illusions on him now, and will try to Astral Imprison them out. Pioneer could be uh, disrupting the Phantom Lancer illusions at this point to get an illusion army of his own. I'm not sure if he realizes that, but if you do disrupt an illusion, you will get an equally powerful illusion back, so you can create your own illusion army through that. So he is a decent counter to the Phantom Lancer, not a perfect one, but a decent one. But like I said, the Keeper of the Light Phantom Lancer is a good draft, but it is not unbeatable. If you can manage to gank him over and over in the early game with a good mid hero or something like that, he is killable, he is beatable. And uh, the Cancel Lancer, perhaps not the most fun pick to watch, but 
but he definitely does run these games when he, they let him free farm. So free farm Gyro in the top lane versus a free farm Santa Lancer would have been a bit closer. But the GG's come out, and it looks like everyone's going to start just connecting off. So thank you for letting me cast you here today. I hope you've enjoyed my replay cast, and please let me know if you have any feedback for me. You can find me at twitch.tv slash ccdota, that's S-E-E-C Dota at twitch.tv or at youtube.com slash ccdota. Same names, same letters, same spelling there. You can find all my VODs there and all of my past work. So please come check me out, subscribe, like, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash ccdota, all the same. So please come follow me, like me, and if you want me to cast any of your games for you, please let me know. I am here for you, and any improvements I can make, I am open to them. Thank you, Dota fans, and have a fantastic night.